So the purpose of pure tone audiometry, when I say pure tones, I mean, you know, if you go back to hearing, cycle, hearing science, one frequency, so 1,000 hertz, 2,000 hertz, 4,000 hertz, pure tone audiometry, the purpose of it is to find the type and the degree of hearing loss. You find a person's threshold, the level at which the tones are perceived as barely audible is the threshold or the lowest level of hearing sensitivity. We're going to do that at different frequencies. First things first, you make sure your equipment is calibrated. So you make sure that your equipment is producing the correct frequency and the correct intensities that's being read on the audiometer. And every year, all the audiometers, all the special equipment in the clinic has to get calibrated. So you have to hire an outside company to come in and to test the equipment and to measure the equipment and make sure that the equipment is working properly. If your equipment's not working properly, you're not going to get a valid test. The purpose of air conduction audiometry, go back to last chapter, air conduction has tests the whole system. So you wear the headphones or you put in insert earphones and you test the outer ear, the middle ear, the inner ear up through the auditory nerve. So sound goes through the entire system. The purpose is to specify the amount of a patient's hearing sensitivity at various frequencies. If there is a loss of hearing, air conduction testing can specify the degree of the loss but not where the deficit was produced. So doing air conduction testing alone, you can't determine if, or if it's a conductive hearing loss, a sensory neural hearing loss, or a mixed hearing loss. But air conduction testing does give you the degree or the severity of the hearing. You put the headphones directly over a person's head, push their ears away, push their hair away, make sure their earrings are removed, it might be uncomfortable, make sure the diaphragm of the headphones is aimed directly at the person's ears or insert earphones. Insert earphones, like I said, are better and they're especially good with older populations or younger populations. So older people, older populations, if you put heavy headsets on their ears, it might like pull down their ear canals and create an artificial conductive hearing loss because their skin has less, you know, collagen, so it's less elastic. So it the heavy headphones would pull down on a person's ear canals, an older person's ear canals, and affect their the validity of your test. So with very old people, older people, you want to use insert earphones, and with children too, because headsets are heavy. For air conduction, you usually start with the better ear if you know what it is, and you begin testing at a thousand hertz. The reason we begin testing at a thousand hertz is because it's a frequency that is very important for speech and most easily heard. So you start at 1,000 hertz, and then you go up to 2,000 hertz, 4,000 hertz, 8,000 hertz. You retest 1,000 hertz, then you test 500, 250. So air conduction, you're testing these octaves. Octaves means doubling. If there's a 20 dB difference in the threshold of the scores between, say, 1,000 or 2,000 or 2,000 or 4,000, then you test interoctave and you would test 1500 hertz and 3000 hertz. But you only test interoctave when there's a difference of 20 decibels between the two. So we begin testing at 1000 hertz because it's a frequency that's easily heard by most people and it's said to have high test retest reliability. If a person has severe hearing loss, you might want to begin testing at a higher frequency. I mean, at a lower frequency, I'm sorry. When people have hearing losses, they tend to begin in the higher frequencies, and the lower frequencies are sort of the last to go. So if a person comes in with a real severe hearing loss, you could start at the lower frequencies to begin testing. Pure tone testing is initially begun at 30 dBHL, so 1,000 hertz at that frequency at a level of 30 dBHL. If a response is obtained, then you begin your threshold search. If there's no response obtained at 30 dBHL, then you quickly jump up to 50 dBHL. If there's no response obtained at 50 dBHL, then you start to go up in 10 dB steps until you get a response. Each time you put the tone in, you hold the button down for about two seconds. That gives the person enough time to hear it. After a response is obtained, then you go down in 10 dB steps. When a response is no longer obtained, then you go up in 5 dB steps until it's heard again. So this is called the threshold search. 
down 10, up 5, down 10, up 5. For example, I have normal hearing, so if you were to test my hearing at 1,000 hertz and 30 decibels, I would raise my hand that I heard the tone. You would then go down to 20 decibels. I would raise my hand because I would be able to hear that tone. You would then go down to 10 decibels. I would raise my hand because I'd probably still be able to hear that tone. You would go down to 0 decibels. I'm not sure if I would be able to hear 1,000 hertz at 0 decibels. So if I do not respond at 0 decibels, then you would go up to 5 decibels. If I don't respond at 5, you would go up to 10. If I respond at 10, you go back to 0. And you do this until they get about 50% right. So you'll usually sort of dance around a person's threshold. For example, if my threshold at 1000 hertz is 10 dB, sometimes I might hear 10 dB and sometimes I might not hear 10 dB. Like you sort of dance around this 5 decibels of 5, 10, and 15 when you're around someone's threshold. When you do your observations, you'll notice this. So to find a threshold, you do down 10 dB for each correct response, up 5 dB for each incorrect response. And that's the threshold search. When you find your threshold, you record it on the audiogram. The audiogram is a picture, it's a graph. It shows um, frequency versus intensity. Frequency is measured in hertz. It goes across the top on the x-axis. The intensity is on the y-axis. You don't record every correct response. You just make a recording at the threshold. So if my threshold at 1,000 hertz is 10 dB, I'll make a mark at 10 dB. For the left ear, air conduction testing, the marks are blue X's. For the right ear, air conduction testing, the marks are red circles. You connect all the thresholds that you obtain at 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000 hertz with a straight line in the right, for the right ear and a dotted line for the blue ear. Finally, there's the pure tone average. This is really important. It's part of like the cross-check reliability. So to make sure that you're doing everything correctly or that you're getting a valid test, you're going to take the pure tone average of your thresholds collected at 500, 1,000, and 2,000 hertz. So the lowest level that you obtained at 500, 1,000, and 2,000 hertz in the right ear, you're going to add them and then divide by 3 to get the average. And you're going to do the same for the left ear. And that's your pure tone average, which is useful for predicting the thresholds of speech as well as establishing a degree of communication impact. The pure tone average will come up again when we talk about speech audiometry. Here's an example. If my um, threshold at 500 hertz is 40 dB, at 1000 hertz 30 dB, at 2000 hertz 45 dB, add them up, divide by 3. My average for those frequencies, my average threshold is 38.3 dB.